Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy that you joined us again today. Today, we are going to learn all about Moses. Do a fun activity, sing a song, and then I'm going to read you a story about Harriet Tubman, who was known as the Moses of her people. But first, let's go into the Youth and Family Chapel, where Marilyn is going to read us the story of Moses from the Old Testament uh, out of Archbishop Desmond Tutu's Children of God Storybook Bible. Let's go! This is the story of how Moses let his people go. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, but Pharaoh said no. So God sent plagues to convince Pharaoh to let the Hebrew people go. First he turned the water into blood. Then he sent frogs and gnats and flies. Then the cattle died and the people and their animals got sores on their skin. There was thunder and hail and a great cloud of locusts filled the sky and darkness covered the land for three days. After each plague, Pharaoh agreed to let the Hebrew people go, but then he would harden his heart and say no. Finally, God wept because now he had to send the most terrible plague of all. Mark your doors with lamb's, go with lamb's blood, God told Moses to tell the Hebrew families. On that dreadful night, death passed through the streets, and in every Egyptian family, the firstborn died. The Hebrews called that night Passover because death passed over the Hebrew homes that were marked with lamb's blood and spared their children's lives. Go, be gone, Pharaoh cried as he held the body of his eldest son. The Hebrews quickly left, but when Pharaoh saw that there was no one to build his pyramids, he hardened his heart once again. He sent his army to cha chase the Hebrews down and bring them back into slavery. The Hebrews fled from Egypt and at last arrived at the edge of the sea. They looked behind them and saw Pharaoh's horses and chariots racing toward them. They were trapped. God help us, they cried. Moses said, don't be afraid. God is with us. God told Moses to hold his staff over the sea. God blew back the water with a mighty wind, leaving a dry pass through the sea. The Hebrews crossed over on dry land, the waters forming a wall on their left and on their right. The Egyptian chariots followed, but their wheels got stuck in the mud. The, he the Hebrews watched in awe as the waters returned and swallowed up Pharaoh's army. At last, they were really free. Moses led the people in a song of joy. Then his sister Miriam shook a tambourine, and the women sang and danced to thank God for saving them. Dear God, help me to bring freedom to all of your children.
Lexi. Thanks for helping us out with activity time today. Um, all right, so what are you gonna make for us? Moses. Moses, out of a popsicle stick. All right, so get your Tuesday bag out of your packet and you will need some scissors. All right, and then out of your activity bag. So this activity has two parts. So Lexi's gonna start us out. So that put it aside for later. That's the next step. So we have a glue stick, some crayons. Hmm, what is that? Very interesting. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we are going to make Moses. Um, Marilyn read the story of Moses for us, and now Lexi's gonna help us make a Moses craft. Okay, what do we do first, Lexi? I'm gonna cut my string into two pieces of string, and I'm gonna tie on Moses's head cloth. the cloth on there and now I'm going to tie it with this little piece of yarn. Okay, now I'm going to draw on some eyeballs. Okay. Okay, can you hold it up and show us yes. what you did? All right, so there's Moses has on his head covering and he has eyes. Okay, all right, what's next? And now I'm going to take my glue stick and glue on his beard. So I'm going to glue onto the popsicle stick so that I don't get too much and the glue sticks over the edge. That is a very good tip. And that is his beard. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Okay, what's next? So now I'm gonna take his um, shirt his, and wrap it around his body and tie it on with my other piece of yarn. And that is your Moses. Very good. All right, let's put it next to the book here and see if that Moses looks a little bit like this Moses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's close. Okay, so now what are we going to do with that other little bag that was in the packet? Let's go to the kitchen, and I think Hannah is going to show us what we're going to do with those two items. All right, so get that container or that baggie and your Moses and let's head to the kitchen. Hi, Hannah. Thank you for um, coming and helping with our craft today. We're going to make Moses part the Red Sea. All right, so yes. Hannah has a pan, um, a glass pan. Can you fill that up with water, Hannah? So do this along at home. Get your glass pan and fill it with water. A little more. A little more. All right, that's probably enough. Okay, so now Hannah's got her little cup of black pepper and she's going to sprinkle that over the top of her water. Okay, 
Okay, so let me see your Moses, Hannah. There's the Moses, so you made a Moses. All right, so now dip Moses' feet into the dish soap. Get it really good. All right, and then, oh no, Pharaoh is chasing us. Part the Red Sea. <gasps> Look at that. And Moses says, let my people go. I'm going to read you the story of Moses when Harriet Tubman led her people to freedom. This book was written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Kadir Nelson. This book has won two awards, a Caldecott Honor Award and the Coretta Scott King Award. So if you haven't finished your Pringles, why don't you grab your Pringles and settle down and listen to the story of Harriet Tubman. On a summer night, Harriet gazes at the sky and talks with God. I am your child, Lord, yet Master owns me and drives me like a mule. Now he means to sell me south in chains to work cotton, rice, indigo, or sugar cane, never to see my family again. God speaks in a whippoorwill's song. I set the North Star in the heaven, and I mean for you to be free. Harriet sees the star twinkling. My mind is made up. Tomorrow I flee. God wraps her in the blanket of night, and she returns to the cabin, sleeps beside her husband one last time. The next day, Harriet tells not a soul her plans. She grips the axe to chop wood, breathes deeply and murmurs, Lord, I'm going to hold steady on to you. And God whispers back in the breeze, I'm going to see you through, child. At dusk, Harriet chants, when that old chariot comes, I'm going to leave you. She hopes her loved ones hear her song and know it means farewell. While the plantation sleeps, Harriet prays, Lord, send me a sign. An owl screeches, the hour has come. Harriet slips into the night. Running through the swamp, she hears frogs croaking and her own heart pounding. Lord, I can't make it alone. And in the moon's reflection on the creek, she sees God's face. Harriet, you dreamed that saints saved you, but mortals will give you refuge. The woman in the wagon who also spoke kindly to me. Yes, Harriet, I must go to her. The woman points Harriet to safe havens, hiding places for runaways, and Harriet steals away into darkness. She creeps through the woods. Her heart flutters. Hush, hoof beats. Please, Lord, don't let them catch me and take me back to face Master's whip. Don't let my journey end here. In the underbrush, Harriet sinks into a deep sleep. God cradles her. And when she wakes, the men on horseback have passed and day breaks. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me. In a clearing, the safe haven. Harriet knows that most strangers would turn her in, not help her. But the farmer's wife feeds Harriet and then tells her to sweep the yard. I don't know who to trust, Lord. Search for my face in theirs and for my hands in their work. 
What have you in your hands? In a dust cloud, she sees the broom become a staff and then a rifle. Harriet startles, but holds on. I will arm you against your enemies, but you will not harm a soul and no harm will come to you. The dust settles as she stops sweeping and all is as it was. At nightfall, Harriet climbs into a wagon and the farmer covers her with blankets. As the wagon wobbles along, Harriet worries that it is heading to jail. Should I leap, Lord? Trust me to protect you, child. A heart song lulls her to sleep. Swing low, sweet chariot. The wagon stops at dawn. Harriet walks till her legs ache, and then she leans against a tree. Lord, I miss my folks. Harriet, your father taught you to read the stars, predict the weather, gather wild berries, and make cures from roots. Use his lessons to be free. You will meet again. A mosquito buzzes in Harriet's ear. She rises and moves on. A boatman rows her upriver. Back on shore, Hounds snarl and sniff for Harriet's trail. She races as fast as she can. Lord, I can't outrun them. God speaks through a babbling brook. Shed your shoes. Wade in the water to trick the dogs. Upstream, the barking ceases and fear washes away. Thank you, Lord. Harriet's feet bleed and her gut churns. Under the stars, she draws near to God. Lord, don't let nobody turn me round. I'd rather die than be a slave. Harriet, keep going. You have already glimpsed the future. She recalls dreams where she flew like a bird sank and was lifted by ladies in white who pulled her north. Fly, Harriet, your faith has wings. Up ahead, she hears word that patrollers are nabbing runaways and crouches for days in a potato hole. She dreams she is buried alive. Have you deserted me, Lord? Harriet, when you were a girl, you hid in a pig pen to shun the whip. You fought hogs for table scraps, almost starved before you faced the lash. I am with you now as I was then. An old prayer comes back to her. Lord, make me strong. Help me fight. After seven days, Harriet rises from that hole like a sapling. She reaches for the sun as if to touch God's hand. By moonlight, she marches on, making her way mile after rugged mile, hiding in haystacks, attics, and barns, and holding God's hand all the while. She often wearies, how far, Lord? As far as you can walk with me, my child, and I can carry you. When Harriet is about to drop, a couple in a wagon ride by. They say slavery is a sin, and they take her on the last leg of her journey. Not far now, child, not far now. In the promised land, Philadelphia. The sun shines gold in the trees, and Harriet feels light as a cloud. She studies herself from head to toe to see if she has wings. Is this heaven, Lord? Not heaven, Harriet. 
free soil. But freedom brings new woes. Lord, I am a stranger here. All my kin are down south. Would you like to see them? As Harriet dusts, her family's faces appear in the wood grain, and she wipes a tear from the table. I would make a home for them here. I would give my own life to free them. Then go back for them, daughter. But first, go to my house to prepare for the journey. And Harriet goes to church and finds not just holy ground, but a stopping place, a station along the underground railroad that slaves travel to freedom. Harriet hands out shirts and shoes and serves butter beans and biscuits to newly arrived runaways, while agents who plot escape paths pass on secret routes that she learns by heart. Finally, a conductor, a guide, she turns to God. I am ready, Lord, lead me. Harriet, I will make a way for you. Risking her own life, Harriet returns to the dreaded South and rescues her family. But she dreams of slaves still in the yoke. She hears their groans, sees their tears, and tosses and turns in her sleep. Then God opens her eyes. Harriet, be the Moses of your people. But I am a lowly woman, Lord. Harriet, I have blessed you with a strong body, a clever mind. You heal the sick and see the future. Use your gifts to break the chains. I will do as you say, Lord. I will show others the way to freedom that you have shown me. Save all you can, daughter. And Harriet heeds God's call. She goes south again and again and keeps her bands of runaways moving, come storms and rough country, clear to Canada, Canaan land. And when free souls sing her praises, she gives glory where it is due. It wasn't me. It was the Lord. I always trust him to lead me. And he always does. Well done, Moses. Well done. I hope you enjoyed this story and the crafts that we did together today. And maybe this story will inspire you to learn more about Harriet Tubman, who came to be known as the Moses of her people. And join us again tomorrow for more stories and more activities. Bye, guys.